Welcome to another show of the SSC Show. Thanks for all our followers. We're now over 325,000 fans and over half a million uh, Twitter impressions. So we really appreciate everybody that watches the show. Tonight, the Senior Manager, Business Development from Cisco Systems, Brian Bedford. Thank you for joining us tonight. And we will introduce everybody on the panel, but first let's start with you, Brian. Uh, Y'all have had some uh, recent developments happening. Uh, tell us what's happening with Cisco Systems. You guys have some uh, breaking news for us tonight. Well, I don't. I appreciate that, Chris, and um, and uh, the team here uh, that putting this together. It's been great. Um, yeah, it's been very exciting. Um, the the uh, development and uh, growth of the of the really. Uh, an IP platform and the expansion of that from a Cisco perspective um, really um, uh, you know, really taking shape uh, on February 1st kind of our latest product uh, launch which is uh, which is a product we call Stadium Vision Mobile and I'm sure we'll talk more about it but um, the, the uh, that product basically allows you to uh, stream uh, live video in a very high dense environment. So think of it like a basketball arena or a, or a pitch in a soccer match or, or maybe a football stadium. Um, that real big challenge pushing um, uh, multicast video or any kind of stream a large quantity of fans has been a challenge that you know we've seen in the industry for a number of years and one that we've been trying to ch tackle for, for some time. So we're really excited about Stadium Vision Mobile. It's kind of the latest of series of products that we got uh, for sports entertainment and uh, happy to share it with you guys tonight. We appreciate you coming on. Everybody watching, uh, your screen is not black. Brian's uh, had a little video issues. Fortunately, we can at least hear him. So, great. You just cut out, Chris. Been a, fan, been a sportscaster, been to all these games, and uh, it seems like the sports industry is changing at such a rapid pace. No longer do fans just go to games to watch the live action. They want cool stuff within the stadium. Uh, what have you noticed, and what kind of stuff are you guys working on? I muted you again, Brian. Um, I think you're, you're spot on. You know, from, from a Cisco perspective, we're seeing really four big, four big um, transformational changes. Our fans right now want a more immersive experience, they want a mobile experience, they want a social and a personal experience. And so as we start to build our solutions, we're trying to really capture those compelling things in the marketplace right now. And so, um, you know, whether it be a league, a media company, or, or, and or the fans, you know, they, they're driving towards those things in their lives. You know, I look at my kids We've got a three-year-old and eight-year-old, and I can barely break them off the tablet right now at home. Great point. Great point. And, and so, and so that that is that is a precursor of the of the life that we live in right now. Is that everything that we do? If you think about those four really simple principles, everything we do now is much more immersive, much more social, very mobile, and on it. We want it our own way, right? So we want to consume the event in our own personal way. So. You know, today, um, how many of us watch a game at home with a mobile device, interact in, in all of those fashions? So, you know, the event and the venues and the venue operators, they're seeing the same challenges, is that you've got to be able to give those same experiences that they do um, uh, Monday through Friday. They've got to be able to offer those same experiences on Saturday their sports fan. Absolutely. And it, it has changed dramatically. Okay. Well, the pan, uh, other people want to start asking questions. And for everybody that's a Noel Bean fan, great musician, great singer, she will be coming on here in the next 10 minutes, so bear with us. She's going to actually sing three songs live, so kind of cool. So uh, Cisco could probably use uh, live, because y'all aren't just sports, y'all do entertainment as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled to hear her sing. Absolutely, Chris. Awesome. Okay, first question is from Robert Hanlon. Fire away. Robert, go ahead. You're muted, Robert. Uh, hey, Brian. Uh, quick, my question was just uh, I had seen uh, recently with Cisco with the Brooklyn Nets app and doing that video within Arena there. So I was wondering if you could touch upon uh, how what how uh, Cisco decided on which teams they'd embark upon, you know, putting in this new technology in first. 
and then uh, what future plans there might be to expand, whether it's maybe to the collegiate platform as well, or other teams that uh, are in stadiums you plan on working with. Yeah, no, it's a it's a it's a good question, Robert. Um, so, you know, let me back up just one step for you in in, in saying, you know, Cisco really embarked into the sports marketplace five years ago with with really not not really understanding how it worked or you know what the fans wanted or what the teams wanted or what solutions they needed to build and so you know through an evolution of product solutions they've really looked at it as can we really build self-sustaining business platforms that teams would want and would help the teams do you know do their business and so you know from from uh, specific to Barclays, uh, obviously it's a great opportunity for us being, um, you know, want, you know, if not the media capital of the world in New York, obviously a brand new construction. So for a variety of reasons, um, you know, that made logical sense. But you also have to have, you know, uh, really an attitude and an aptitude for embracing technology. Um, and the guys at Barclays have been great. Chip Foley um, and their staff have just been absolutely tremendous. Um, you know, they've had a very much of an entrepreneurial spirit as they look to say, how do we transform the game day experience and how do we um, put that technology into our everyday practice? You know, if you look at 20 years ago when, you know, teams first started to put in the fascia signage, you know, video boards like fascia signage in venues, that was kind of a new and compelling thing. Well, now you don't go to a venue without that in the venue, right? And so we really see Wi-Fi, mobile, um, all the things building, we see those as really platforms that everyone will have in the future. It won't be, a, it won't be it's just really a matter of when. So um, today, um, Barclays obviously being a great partner with the new arena made, made a ton of sense. We spent a year, um, over a year, doing a, what we call an early field trial um, at Sporting Park in Kansas City. Um, and so when the new MLS um, season starts here in another couple of weeks, um, all of you Sporting Kansas C City fans will also have the ability to see Stadium Vision Mobile. And then if we have any folks on here, Chris, um, the, the folks at Real Madrid are our, our final partner that we have on board to release Stadium Vision Mobile. But... We are actively um, pursuing projects um, that will utilize, again, our platform of connected stadium Wi-Fi, which is Wi-Fi for highly dense venues, the Stadium Vision Mobile sitting on top of that. Um, we're actively proposing and talking to clients and, and leagues and teams really around the world every day now. That was awesome. Okay. Now, as you all know, this is not my normal setup, so I pop. Wait, hold on, guys. Interruption. Mr. Yates, your champagne is ready for the big show. Come on in here, sir. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> I'm at the Renaissance in Orlando, and they're bringing me champagne for the show because this is a one-year anniversary of the SSC show. Thank you. My pleasure, Mr. Yates. Have a wonderful evening and enjoy. All right. Thank you, guys. All right. Uh, back to the show. Uh, sorry, guys. I was interrupted there. Um, that was pretty cool. That was on live. That was great. Way to go. You were just on YouTube. <laughs> That's the biggest... Uh, that's the biggest uh, celebrity endorsement you'll ever have. Did they okay. come the room for that sponsorship? Hopefully. Uh, well, oh yeah. Don't worry. I'm getting, no. Come. On. They're paying me for this nonsense. Okay. Hey. So, uh, all right. So where were we? That was that was pretty good. Uh, Kevin. Oh, you, and uh, Kevin's now drinking coffee sponsored by Starbucks. Okay. <laughs> That's right. Kevin. Actually, you have a question now. Yeah, actually, community coffee. But uh, speaking of sponsorship, that's that's the area that I I work in. And and Brian, I had a a question for you because as we work with properties, as we work with brands to access fans, um, we had a bit of a challenge reaching fans who are actually at the event. Um, you know, the, the, the creation of the hashtag has done a good job of really compiling everyone into a space uh, where we can market to them. Uh, but I've got a couple questions for you on how you envision uh, the, the wireless capabilities in stadium really uh, folding out. Is this something, is this a platform that the, the institution, whether it's a college or a pro team, is going to control? Um, or will fans have direct access to their social networks on their own? Uh, can they go straight to Facebook? Can they go straight to Twitter? 
or will they have to go through some sort of platform where there's video and social interaction on the side? Can you can you bring a little insight to that? Yeah, uh, good question, Kevin. I I think you know. So the first the first kind of patent answer would be that you know the market's still trying to figure out what the market should do to some degree. Um, and, and I don't say that flippant, but you know there 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 are a bunch of different models that are out there, and so whether it be you know forced to a landing page um, with that station element to it, or it be a um, a carrier that is going to charge for access, um, which you know is is not as popular as it once was, kind of the um, um, like a Boingo or something like that, where you're seeing some of those kind of models that are out there. I think I think that the, the the leagues and the teams, whether it be pro or college or or international, I think they're getting you know they're getting savvy in that they understand that this is an asset they want to try to control as much as they can, and I think they want to try to make it as possible. Now I think with that they're going to because it'll be open. I think you know then it becomes up to the the rights holder, the media company, and or team come up with you know very cool and immersive ways to activate inside of that right. platform and so I think you know from our from a Cisco perspective you know we see that there'll, there'll be you know be a number of new business opportunities we think there will be a number of new experiences that you will have at the at the at the uh, venue I mean just think about you know a couple of years ago you know um, you know activation coming to your mobile device was really a foreign concept Right. Now you know the immersion of stats and custom content and custom advertising. You know, we think that you know, as location-based services get more and more, um, you know, uh, compelling. We, you know, Chris may like Dr. Pepper, or in this case tonight, he may like champagne. <laughs> but you know, Robert from Amherst likes you know Coke or you everybody know, likes champagne. A absolutely. <laughs> and but, Bud Light but, is my sponsor. And uh, Verizon, by the way, is uh, sponsoring this. Thing. Sure, and so so we, we think that there will be a way to really do geo targeting in the future, and and so you know uh, from from a Cisco perspective, you know we want to just we, we're trying to really focus on connect the unconnected. How can we build business platforms that our that our teams, customers, and leagues can use, and then they're going to be able to activate in so many cool and compelling ways that. I honestly think we've just now scratched the surface. I agree with you on that. I heard I heard a couple of years ago, Brian, and, and tell me where this is going. I remember this story with the Miami Dolphins were the first team to do this, where you could be watching your mobile phone, you could be on the 20-yard line, and the action's on the opposite side of the goal line. So you're so far away in the live action, but you can look on your mobile phone, and they've got cameras down low, red zone, goal line, end zone, and you can watch from your mobile phone within the stadium. Is that kind of where it's going now? Yeah, I mean, really, that's 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 Stadium Vision Mobile. So, you know, in the past, people were doing that really off a radio device or like an RF device, cool. Chris. And so now we're talking, you know, people, um, everybody on the WebEx hold or everybody on the Google phone, that's the device that you want to use, right? So um, you don't want to carry around another device. You want to use your iPhone or iPad or whatever it, whatever your mobile device is now. And that's what people the people want to do exactly what you you said. So really, that's the impetus of why we created Stadium Vision Mobile. I mean, when you go to Barclays Center, if you download the Barclays app today, you can scroll down and a little icon on there that says Watch. And if you were in the venue at Barclays and you were turned and you you know clicked on settings on your iPhone to Wi-Fi, it would automatically bring up four channels of video. So last week, Chris. We had, we had clients and customers from all over the world, literally all over the world, and they had they had a little uh, GoPro cam above the uh, above the goal. They had one down on the baseline. They had one at the scores table. I mean, they had cool and compelling content that you know. If I'm a fan, I want to see different angles. Or I mean, you know, again, last night right at the Pacer game. What if you had a cool different angle that you didn't get to see on Sports Center? I mean, maybe you maybe you're into that or. If think about it in hockey. There's so many interesting angles that you know the broadcaster can't get to that. But if you had a way to deliver that unique and compelling experience in the stadium, you know um, we think that there's a there's a case um, with that immersive experience 
that you can, if not maintain the level of ticket sales that you've got, but even if you increase per caps um, through, through these kinds of experiences. Great. Okay. Now we've got next, uh, Chris Griffin has a question. Chris, go ahead. Hey, Brian. Thanks for uh, doing this tonight. A uh, question I have is we hear a lot about the success that you've had um, through press, through this Google Plus Hangout, but what are some of the challenges you've faced and you foresee facing in the future, and how do you plan about going about them? Yeah, I mean, I think anytime you're on the leading or bleeding edge of technology, you're, you're always faced with, with challenges. And I think, you know, we try to focus on, you know, really listening to our customers to really drive the innovation and the platforms that we build. I think if you take a step back from that and you, you, you say, okay, Brian, well, what was some of the challenges that you had? You know, I look at, at the carrier that came to us, you know, back in the day and said, we need to solve, you know, load. <laughs> data offload for the phones and help us at some of these major parks. I mean, building a high dent, uh, building a platform to do high density wireless, it, you know, it takes a while. And, you know, for, from a Cisco perspective, we're, we're continually per trying to perfect that platform. And so, you know, we've been doing it now for uh, two years and we think that we've learned a lot of things, but at the same time, you learn a lot of things, right, Chris, um, by going through that. So I, I think, you know, our, our challenge to you know, make sure that we continue to listen to our customers and and, and the fans and, and, and the teams that, that that we serve out there, and, and to really try to continue to be innovative and leading, um, while thinking about how does that complement the portfolio that we have in, in in place today. If you go back and you look at where Cisco started, you know they took you know we're most most people know of Cisco as really a box company, right? We sell routing and switching gear, and so go into sports and not have any background, not have any, not have, not have a team built inside Cisco, not have, to not have a product, and then, you know, five years later to have, you know, three solutions, we've done um, 100 installs in 20 countries around the world and have built out a whole series of partner programs as a part of that. I mean, those are challenges, Chris, and ones that, you know, we continue to be focused on and, 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 and to try to be innovative in, you know, our process and our approach as well as like I said you know focused on what is what's our what are our customers want and how can we continue to be leading edge for them all right so we've got uh, Noel Bean standing by Charles uh, the problem is we're sold out so what do we need to do here well, as I, like I said before if you want to get uh, Brian to drop out then we can invite Noel in no, Brian um, needs to stay for a sec. Okay. Here, I'll, I'll drop off for a second. I don't mind at all. All right, okay. Diana. Thank you, Diana. I'll see you all later. Okay. All right, we're about to invite you. So we're about to invite Noelle being here shortly. All right, Charles, invite her. I'm inviting her. We can continue to talk, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. Why don't uh, Kevin? Why don't you have a question real quick? Yeah, yeah. And then we'll know I'll be on. Brian, it's Kevin Burke again with Rockbridge Sports Group, and uh, Commissioner Slive has made a big push to making to make sure that the SEC stadiums have wireless capabilities. Uh, I know for the properties themselves, it's really about ticket sales and and really competing against the television. Um, but for fans, what what do you expect that the fans will see? In terms of, of the fun elements that this will bring to the uh, to the table, I know that when you when you tailgate at a game, let's say LSU Alabama, you get to spend time with your friends, and then you get into the stadium, and you may be sitting across uh, the end zone from one another. Do you, do you envision opportunities for fans to chat live during the game in venue? Also, being able to chat with with some of the fans that are at home in front of the television. Can you give me can you give me some insight on what you see this evolving into for fans? Yeah, again, you know, uh, it, it's really a, you know, it's really where is the market going in general. So I mean, if you look at the things that you do now, you know, whether it be predictive games or whether it be, you know, social activities that happen, I think all of those things are just going to get more and more pervasive in 
in our experience in the in in the venue. So people want to have rich statistical experiences. You know, if you're in a suite or you're at the line, you want to understand. Okay, well, if this guy gets hurt and he's the quarterback, who's the next guy? And you know, what kind of content can I get my fingertips on? I, I think there'll be a number of different things. You're already seeing. Um, you're already seeing people are trying to do um, um, food and beverage in venue or you know at your seat or um, they're doing you know tweet seat promotions and activations or tweet to screen activation or, or uh, you know, again there's just a variety of different things Kevin so I think you know to my point earlier I think that we have just scratched the surface I think that you know, if you talk to media companies, rights holders, leagues, you know, they look at this as really a greenfield opportunity for them. I, I, I genuinely think that, um, you know, it as a whole is really trying to get their arms around what is the opportunity. You know, if you think about all of us have been to a sporting event, we've seen a replay or a kiss cam on the video board. And if you think back, if, if you think back, you know, again, 20, maybe 25 years ago, did we have HD production and video boards in every stadium that we went to? No, we had a static board, and, and it would give you the time, and it would give you the score. But that immersive video experience, you really didn't have. You didn't have the smoke and pyrotechnics and all the pregame intros. Now, what you would be bored if you went to a venue and that wasn't there. Right. Well, I think. I think in the next twenty years, Kevin, that whole you know, social mobility, immersive, you know, all the things I kind of shared earlier, I, I don't think that we're going to know what we did before that. You know, I, I, again, I think about my kids, and, you know, I think that content will be served up to them. The, the, the fans, they'll have a fan profile that, you know, information or things or chat or what will just be served to them. Um, so I think there's some cool things coming for sure. I agree. And I think what's going to happen, too, is uh, – and you know this way in advance. You know about all kinds of things that are happening. But people are going to wear glasses, and it's going to tell them first and ten. It's going to give you stats. They're going to watch the stadium. It's going to be digital in front of them. Yeah, I mean, you know, Google Glass is a great example. I mean, you know, two weeks ago, did we even know about that product, you know, for the mainstream, you know? And so, again, I think, you know, the, the, I guess the last comment that, that I will share with with. with with you, Kevin, on that topic is that, you know, right now, the, the you know, uh, and you'll see Cisco driving kind of this mantra through all of its businesses, but really connecting people, places, and things, and process, you know, that, that's the next kind of evolution of the internet, right? If you, if you less than 1% of the world's things are really connected. And so, you know, when you start to think IP-enabled sunglasses and devices and belt buckles and all the crazy thing, you know, Chris's champagne glass, all the different things that... Yeah, that what was be. that? That was kind of weird. Yeah, but, but you know, we, we think... That, that was not staged, by the way. Yeah. So, um, so, yeah, I mean, we just think that, you know, uh, the, the, this what we call, what Cisco is kind of using as a brand is kind of the Internet of Everything or the Internet mm -hmm. of Things. You know, we think that that will obviously have a big role in sports, especially when you look at, by 2017, there'll be 10 billion mobile devices, and 70, at least 70% 70 of the traffic on the web will be video related. All of that will be, you know, very compelling from a sports perspective. Yeah, I, I agree. We'll have to, we'll definitely have to connect after this uh, to, to, to talk about ways we may be able to team up with uh, what we're doing in the digital sports marketing side with brands and, you uh, I think I think there's some unique opportunities for us to work together. Perfect. Thanks, Chris, for the oh, broker yes. brokering a meeting. <laughs> I, that's what I do, man. I, I broker all kinds of stuff. So, Brian Bedford from Cisco, welcome, uh, Noel Bean, the singer. You do sports entertainment as well. Noel, hello. Hi. How are you guys? Awesome. Great. Thank you so much for having me. I, all I know is this, and I do this a lot. So does Charles Hogan and Keith Knox. We introduce people to their first Google Hangout. Your first Google Hangout was with us, of course. So when you, and you are making it big, don't forget us little peeps, okay? Oh, my God. You have more Twitter followers than me, so I can't complain. <laughs> I know that. That's okay. I like to pump you up, though. 
You're doing great. Uh, and I love that you're you're absorbing this new social media. You're really active. Um, thanks for coming on again. We're going to definitely play your music because people want to hear it. Um, how has everything been going since the last time we talked to you? you, you your music wasn't out there. and how? Are, why is it exploding? You played now in San Francisco, New York. Update us a little bit, please. Geez, I'll tell you, it's been the busiest times of my life. Um, I just got back from New York a couple of days ago, actually, so I'm still recovering from being on the road because whenever I travel, I don't sleep because I want to soak up every minute of it because it's so much fun. Um, we played with Seventeen Magazine and a prom dress um, fashion store. They sell wedding dresses as well called Camille Levy. Um, they were kind enough to let me be a part of an amazing event that they had. Um, it was called Prom prom queen search um, fashion show and so I got to sing at that event and met so many amazing people I met Bethany from Z100 um, New York and it was just overall an incredible time um, while I was there also I got to play at this place called the Rockwood and it's an amazing venue um, where BMI was actually they featured me as the pick of the month so I was like yes score I love awesome. my people at BMI but yeah that's that's what's been going on lately and then I'm just getting ready for my uh, gig that I have I have a couple gigs coming up at South by Southwest so just preparing oh, great. we're going to be down there for that so that's perfect yeah. that's fantastic I mean you were playing at Wild About Harry's a hot dog stand here <laughs> at uh, Dallas I mean you've come a long way that's awesome it's Definitely been a wild ride for sure. And uh, Brian, we uh, we do want to thank you. You're going to stay on the show, I would hope. Uh, Brian, Beck, absolutely. Everybody, thank you uh, for him for being on for Cisco, telling us all, all this great stuff. And we want you to interact, ask questions, Noel Bean as well. Uh, anybody that wants a question, raise your hand. Ask on the Twitter chat. Everybody watching the show, uh, Twitter. We get about a half a million impressions on Twitter. Uh, the hashtag is SSE Show. So, Noel, uh, we know you love playing music live. Uh, we want to do that first, but uh, let's let's talk a little bit about. Uh, and, and this was kind of uh, why we like your personality. You're honest. You tell it like it is. How is this? Is this changed your life? Tell me how. It My the music and the career that I've chosen for myself. No, you being a just a rock star now. <laughs> Oh, okay, wait, speaking of that, um, the reason why I was fashionably late for this event was because I was at a different event. Oh, I like that you said fashionably ago. late, not just late. <laughs> yeah, fashionably late, of course. Um, but we were playing, there's a, um, a new, it's kind of like a Good Morning America for Texas or for Dallas um, generally, but it's called D, the broadcast, and it's a part of this thing called D Magazine, and they have one of my songs called Let's Go featured for their theme song for the show, and they um, featured me two weeks ago on the first episode, and um, so that's what I was at. They had a big event and just kind of like a kickoff thing for for the show just being so or going so well thus far so that's what I was at uh, my apologies but I'm so excited no no apologies ever needed all <laughs> right so what do you want to play for uh, who wants the next question after this first song please let me know so what song do you want to play um well I uh, last time I was on the show I played a song that I that I wrote called Like to Love You and um, I actually learned it on the album it's recorded with a ukulele so I, if it was alright I was gonna play it with my youth absolutely and please don't tell Keith Knox that this song is for him Keith Knox this song is for you <laughs> <laughs> oh wait really quick Brian how does it feel to be awesome that's my question to you I, I, I'm still learning from you. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, thank you so much, by the way, um, for being on the show. I, I am stoked to follow up um, after your interview and your talking time on the show. Hey, here. you know, it's, it's amazing, Chris. You, you know, a good old boy from Dallas meets a good old girl from Dallas, and you got a good old boy from Oklahoma City. I mean, it's amazing here that we're doing all this tonight. Yeah, well, that's what I do, man. I'm, uh, that's, what, uh, that's what Google does. Uh, Google's my friend. Let's feed the beast. Let's go. <laughs> Here's like to love you. Hey, uh, Noel, you remember about the studio mode? Ah, uh, do I? Actually? Up there at the settings. Let's see. Oh, oh Charles is going to make you sound better. Not that you need it. 
<laughs> no, what are you saying? She needs studio mode? She's pretty good. <laughs> oh, I got you. She right. knows. I'm in studio mode. I know what she studio needs. She needs bean mode, go. man. <laughs> Here we go. This is like to love you. Thank you guys so much. So Kate Storin uh, says, uh, can I have a quarter of her talent? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Wait, hold on. I've got to figure out how to work the chat. Okay, here we go. That's okay. You guys are Kate, so sweet. Kate, do you have a question for her? Oh. Can you hear me? Vassal. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, we can. Oh, okay. Um, I already asked her this yet earlier today, but I was wondering when you're coming to Canada. I want to come to Canada right now. Can Are you, you from okay. Canada? Can you Are you watching from Canada? Yeah, I am. So legit. Cool. <laughs> no, um, really quick, P.S. I love you, Kate. You're amazing. Um, oh. Did you see that I featured you in that video? Thank you. Yes, what's up? No, you're so sweet. Um, I definitely, is there a Canada tour coming up soon? My manager is over here. Um, <laughs> he says hopefully, so that's that's a 50-50 right now, but we're going to bump I'm it up to 100% soon. Well, there will be, be there will be a, 100 Kate showing up because Kate <laughs> and Katie. I love you're, it. You're, all your fans are named Kate and Katie. Katie, what do you, 
Katie Gordon, do you have a question? Um, not really. Um, I just love you so much, and I really wish I could have seen you because I'm from New York City, but I wasn't 21, so I couldn't come to your show. Oh, see, that's well, now you can watch your live. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, thank you. I love you so much. Thank you so much for loving <laughs> thank me. Thank you. You're so sweet. How I great is it to be loved? I mean, I know. I've only got like two people that love me, my mom and my wife. And you've got like Kate and Katie and fans and this and that. All I need Who's is love from me? Kate. No, well, you've got so much love coming your way. How does that feel? Um, I overwhelming. I feel like I could do a, a bajillion jumping jacks and not run out of breath. That's how much energy I have from all this love. <laughs> We've got uh, Megan and Liz over here saying that she's crying again. I love you so much. You're amazing, Bean. Um, Kaylee Marie, claps, claps, and you sound wonderful. You don't have to go with the uh, with the different mode. <laughs> See, what I think is cool about all this, Megan Noelle, Styles. <laughs> Bean, what I think I love about this is in the old days. You could only play music, and you don't get this response immediately. People are watching live. People are talking to you live. People yeah. are interacting with you live. I think that is the coolest thing that technology has created. What do you think about all that? Honestly, it's so funny that you mentioned that. Um, I just made a video. There's something called the Shorty Awards coming up, and it's kind of just a, an award show for anybody that's done something amazing or is just super successful in social media. And... In the video, I talked about how, you know, back in the day, Elvis and the Beatles didn't have Google Chat or they didn't have Twitter or Facebook to connect with, with their fans and update them on, hey, I'm going to be here or here. It's just word of mouth pretty much. And um, we're so blessed to have this. Like, this is, it's, it's beyond awesome. me how it works, but I'm so thankful for it. Great. All right. All right. Do you want to play another song next? Is that okay? Yeah, for sure. Should I play some Cops and Robbers? Whatever you want. Let's do it. This um, is your I'm, show. I love it. Uh, I'm going to grab my, I just got a little mini Martin, actually. Well, I Man, say you're like bringing it. all this stuff in here. What's going on? <laughs> Don't you worry about it. But um, I, <laughs> I just got this guitar not too long ago, and um, I'm obsessed with it. So anytime I get a chance to play it, I'm like, yes. So I'm going to play you my first single. Um, I just released it in September. And Chris, was was it before um, I released my first single that I was on the show? Oh, sure, absolutely. Just I'm rolling with that yeah. story. Yeah, I'm because rolling with Because when that, when that becomes famous, I was the reason. <laughs> I love it. Um, so, yeah, I released this last September, and it was iHeartRadio's um, – the the pick of the month for the radio stations. So I'm, awesome. I'm an unsigned artist, and they picked my song to play on all of the iHeart radio stations. So it blew my mind. Uh, very blessed I am. So this is Cops and Robbers. I'm gonna do a little crazy breakdown in the in the middle. So get ready for it. You gonna do the studio mode? Sorry. Oh yes. Thank you. What would I do without you? <laughs> nah, Charles. For goodness Please, sake. Charles. That's like right when she's about to start playing. I buzz it. Sounds so damn good. <laughs> Here we go. Does it make me sound like angelic or something? <laughs> Here we go. Ooh, baby, stick them up, you love, or your life. A sweet kiss from poison lips, wanted dead or alive. Seems so clear, now a mystery. Knew it from the start. Revenge is sweet and worth the pain, and I'm aiming for your heart. Bang, bang, bang. Accused of sticky fingers. A prisoner for life. Tell me, babe, who's got the gun? I'm aiming with one eye. Not a single trace of evidence. Nothing left behind. Bullet wounds and a broken heart make for the perfect crime. Oh, oh. Thank 
bang, 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 chicka, bang, bang, bang. And that pistol to the heart, to you it was such a surprise. Oh, I caught you so off guard. Now here's just a taste of the tears I've cried. Oh, I've cried. Never let me go, no, no. Bang, bang, chicka, bang, 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 bang. Let you know now, you're never gonna hurt me, no, 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 no. Bang, 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 bang. How's it feel now? You should've never let me go. Oh, no, 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 no. Bang, bang, chicka, bang, bang, bang. <laughs> That's it. Wow. Okay, uh, Bean, uh, uh, we, we're selling out here. They're blowing up on Twitter. Sweet. Uh, people, are asking when it, people are asking about when her album will be released. What, what can you say to that? I can say that. Oh, whoa, look at those glasses. <laughs> Okay, yeah, really quick. I'm ADD. We just um, no, you don't have actually. To, I'll answer your question you first. You have talent flowing through your head. <laughs> I'll answer your question first, and then I'll get back to these. But um, uh, release of the album soon. soon it's as a uh, it's a secret is what it is right now. Um, we we keep saying in a couple weeks, in a couple weeks. But I've just decided that I'm gonna say soon, and it's probably gonna be in a couple. So cool. <laughs> just check back to my Twitter and uh, my website is beanmusic.com, bean like coffee, beanmusic.com, and you can find out the album will be for sale there. Um, if you check back in a couple weeks, maybe three weeks or so, it will be available for sale. So All right. right. Kate Storen has a question. Kate, go ahead. Okay. Um, I was wondering, out of all Wait, hold, on. hold on. Charles, why are we getting that echo, please? It's because she's still in studio mode. Um, get, Just see, it. she doesn't need studio mode, man. <laughs> all right, Kate, go ahead. Um, I was wondering, out of all the songs you've ever written, which one you are most proud of lyrically? Um, that is an amazing question, actually. Um, without a doubt, the one song that means the most to me lyrically, I have a couple, but the one that means the most to me specifically um, was a story that I wrote about my father, who, um, whenever I was 12 years old, he passed away from a drug overdose, and it was on 4th of July, so it was just a, it was a weird time, um, very unexpected, and it definitely is something that I'm still, and my family is still recovering from, but I wrote this song called Sunshine um, to kind of get out that emotion that was built up for so long, and um in doing that, it was, in a way, a healing process for me, getting those lyrics out and those words that I never got to tell my dad before he passed away. Um, it was it was just, like I said, just something that kind of healed that place in my heart. And I think another reason why it means so much to me is because I've had people come to me, like people I don't know, random strangers, and tell me their story of people that, um, like a person in their life that has passed away and how my song has affected them, like that is my number one reason for being in music is that it's not about lyrics that say, hey, let's party, blah, blah, blah. It's about really just writing real stuff that people can relate to and find some kind of, um, you know, some kind of nurturing factor in it. And just to be able to relate and just kind of be able to say, hey, I've been there too. So that would definitely be one of my favorite songs lyrically. Why do you get, uh, obviously you're a little bit emotional about this. Um, tell me why. It impacts you two ways probably, I would think, uh, the passing of your father and then also people being touched. Why are you so emotional about this right now? Uh, it's it's my favorite reason for being in music. I I don't take my position as something that I can like say hey I'm this artist on YouTube who has a bunch of views I don't I don't see it that way um, it's not a popularity contest to me it's if anything um, I've been given the position that I have to influence others and be a story and a testimony for others to look up to and say you don't have to you know end up this way even though your dad passed away from a drug overdose you can take two paths and that is you know, I just, I feel like 
if anything, I just want to be able to speak into others' lives and, and tell them that everything's going to be okay and that it's, it's all going to work out in the end. I love hearing people that are passionate about what they do, but more importantly about stories behind the story. So I appreciate you sharing that. Uh, we've only really cried once on Google Plus Hangout, and we're about to cry again. So thank you for sharing that. Uh, the other week we had a, an NFL player that talked about his mom and drug overdose, same kind of deal. And so it's great to hear these stories. Not great, but it's great to hear stories that impact you in a positive way because that could have dethroned, that could have crushed you. That could have uh, derailed you. But instead of looking at it as a negative, you took it as a positive. How did you do that? Well, um, like I said, I I saw the path that my dad went down, and it was just kind of spiraling out of control. There was there was no stopping it, and um, I I'm the kind of person who you know if there's two there's two ways you can end up like that, or you can make yourself better, and I mean, the obvious choice would be to make yourself better, but in most cases, it's, it's not like that. So I'm just trying my best to, to take that other higher road and, and, like I said, be a testimony to other people who've gone through this thing or a similar situation as my own. Fantastic stuff. All right, let's play one more. Are you okay? Are we keeping you too long here? Is that okay? Can we play no, one? you're perfect. Um, should I end with a cover? Is that cool? You can do whatever you want. You can stay as long as you okay. want. You can play till midnight tonight. I got champagne being delivered in my room. <laughs> I don't care. Yes, you can go as long as you want. Um, oh, oh, back to the glasses really quick before I play another song. Yes. I just released. You need Google you need Google glasses. I need I okay, I YouTubed that a couple of days ago. Actually my my boyfriend showed me. He was like cuz he used to work for Google. He was like, "Have you heard of Google Glasses and then like the Google car that drives itself?" I was blown away. I love me some Google. But yeah. um <laughs> ADD mode. Um these glasses, can you read what they say? No. They say Google? <laughs> <laughs> they say cool beans. Oh, okay. Awesome. But that's, that's the name of my merch line is Cool Beans, and um, I just... Okay, all right, all right, all right. I want those glasses. I'll wear it on the next Hangout. <laughs> yeah, I'll send you some for sure. But okay. we have two pairs. There's this kind, and then there's a black and white pair. Um, so I'll send you a couple. Oh, there's but, no uh, doubt I'm wearing that on. Everybody in the Hangout that is in this Hangout tonight gets a pair of glasses, and we should all wear it on the next Hangout. All right. Yeah. Sounds good to me. Um, yeah, let's for sure. Let's do it. Um, <laughs> All right, it. let's play so, some music, everybody, because yeah. uh, they don't want to hear me talk. They want to hear you sing. <laughs> so I'm going to do a cover, and everybody knows this. I've done this once before, but not on Google. So um, I'm going to play it for you. I actually played it at the party I was at before this. So I Charles, you, guys... you need to edit all this stuff. She mentioned Google a lot. We could get a sponsorship here. Come on. Yeah, let's do it. All right, I'm going into studio mode. Oh. 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 <laughs> All right. <clears throat> you ready? Here we go. You think I'm pretty without any makeup on. You think I'm funny with Tell the punchline wrong, I know you get me So I let my walls come down, down mm. Before you met me, I was alright But things were kinda heavy You brought me to life now, every February You be my valentine, valentine Let's go all the way tonight No regrets, just love together 
I just I said just that said, was a great. Uh, I said that was the wrong person. I don't care. No, don't. Uh, you, you were better than uh, uh, Perry, but it was Taylor Swift. I don't care. <laughs> well, All I knew was Noel Katie Bean. Perry I don't look. I was on. I actually, I did a Google Hangout uh, in some music award thing the other day. I don't know what it's called. Look, the Grammys. I was on yeah. I, I did a Google Hangout on uh, the Grammys. Have you heard of the Grammys? Maybe. It sounds familiar. So I'm interviewing all these people, and I said, look, I only know Noel Bean. Who are you? So I interviewed this I love person. this guy. No, I'm telling you. I only know Noel Bean, man, because she was on my first Google Hangout. You haven't been on mine. So I interviewed this guy, and so I'm like, ah, whatever, dude. And so uh, I was on this darn thing for four hours. And I go downstairs, and my wife says, uh, who are you on with? I'm like, I don't know, some uh, Mumford twin guy. And uh, she's uh is he big? And I said, oh, that's him on the thing right on TV. He just won the award. So I guess he was big. <laughs> Mumford I guess and he Sons. was big. Mumford and Sons. Holy moly. <laughs> oh, I thought it was a Mumford Twin Kids or something. I don't know. No, man. Mumford and Sons is awesome. <laughs> so I interviewed those guys on a hangout. That's so awesome. But I had no idea who they were. I only know, I only know Noel Bean, man. Oh, I love you, Pierce <laughs> You're my favorite. I know. <laughs> Hey, thanks for coming on. Great stuff. Great music. Oh, Can we get an encore? Thank you so much for having me. You guys are incredible. Oh, we, wow. We had, got somebody new on the show. We've had somebody asking for you to sing Lois Lane this entire time. Ah. Sure. Do I have time for, for sure. a little snippet of Lois Lane? I, I don't know. I cut off Mumford Twins. I'll give you extra time, though. <laughs> <laughs> here's, another, here's another piece of merch. It's my bean beanie. It says Bean right there. I don't know if you can see it. But, all right. All right. Like, let me it, go into it, studio mode, and we're going to Are you sure? Song. Are you sure you're okay to do one more song? The show. Let's do it. This is my all job. All right. <laughs> Last song, Charles. No more people requesting. <laughs> all right. I love you, Beanies. Thanks. All right. One more. All right. Extra time. <laughs> Here we go. This is dedicated to that beanie. Here we go. <clears throat> oh, 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 on the set I seen one take 23 Was the first time you laid your eyes on me Hair in a fuss, hit by a bus Baby don't like when I cuss Oops, you make me laugh, it's no mystery Wearing your suit with those tights underneath You got them fooled, but I know the truth Your secret's safe with me You saved me when you call me baby, I am so happy, and now we're flying, like Superman and Lois Lane, you're Peter Parker, I'm your Mary Jane, baby, if you just believe. What we got is all we need Your kryptonite, I'm your biggest fan When I feel I'm drowning, you're Aquaman Even when the world don't see We're superheroes, baby, you and me We're superheroes, baby, you and me Mm 
Bean, can you can you do me one favor? Sure. What's up? Can you suck a little bit because uh, this is this is people are requesting you to keep staying on and this will go on to like six in the morning. Oh, you play one really yeah. crappy song so people will boo you off the stage. This is really bad. I mean, oh I'm getting requests on tweets and Googles and this and that and and I don't know. I mean, uh, uh, people are wanting you to stay on and I don't want to. I don't want to keep your time too long. <laughs> Well, I mean, it's up to you, Chris Yates. You you hold my um, you hold my my the palm of me in your hand. So whatever you'd like. Oh gosh, don't. If you have more guests coming I on. I can do destroy sure. your career in thirty seconds. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I love I love Google. Y'all are so fun. It is awesome. Does anybody have a question? Let's break it up for a quick question. We do. We should respect your time. Uh, we'll have you on for a couple more minutes. Uh, I mean, this is great. I mean, we are getting so much traction here. So, um, um, does anybody have a question that you're on now? Because this is great. Uh, how about you, uh, Griffith? Do you have a question? Um, I don't really have a question, but I really love you, Bean. And I, I love didn't, you. I didn't get to see you in New York this time, but my sister saw you because she's 21, and you gave her your hat, and I was yeah. so jealous. <laughs> how are all oh people gosh, loving you? Yeah, I'm, oh gosh, I love you guys so much. I was, I, she told me, she came up to you, she was like, my sister is like, uh, adores your music, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I'm so glad to meet you because I've met both of you now. Yeah. Is there more of you guys as far yeah. as siblings? Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for coming on the chat. Thank you. So, so where did you, let me ask you, Griff, where did you find out about this? How did you, uh, how did you become a fan of hers? Um, I'm about I, that. I saw her at Band Against Bullying this summer because I went to see Megan and Liz and we were like, who is this girl? She's awesome. And then we <laughs> have been obsessed with you since July. So. Oh, and then how did you find out about this hangout? Um, from your Twitter, Bean. Who's? Beans? Bean. Okay. Yeah. Great. Kate Storen, you're next. We're going to go through the fans here. Okay, we're going we're gonna to whip through the fans here. One more song and then we'll roll the thing. Kate Storen, what do you got? Okay, I have a question from Allie. She's DMing me asking to ask you a question. Oh, because she couldn't get in the chat, so she wants to ask me ask you if you um, what was your inspiration for writing Roller Coaster? Oh, <laughs> I, okay. Since you asked, um, okay, I wrote that song. That's so funny. Um, okay, anyways, I'm gonna get straight to the point. But I'm so excited that somebody knows that there's a like a real meaning behind that lyric. Um, Roller Coaster is a, is a song that I haven't released yet, um, but it is definitely uh, one of my favorite songs because it has so much of my heart in it too. I wrote it about the music business and how it's definitely a crazy ride um, as far as there's ups and there's downs. There's a yes and one minute and it's gone away like it didn't even happen and it's just my frustration, but at the same time, it's like a love-hate relationship with the music business. It's like, I love writing music so much, and I love performing and everything about it, but whenever it comes to, like, the business part of it, I'm just like, oh, you know? Yeah. So, like, that is, that's what it's about. It's like the whole ride of my career and the business that I've chosen for my life is it's a roller coaster effect, and at the same time, you get the butterflies in your belly, so you love it, and it's like, it's there's never it's always a surprise and I love that about what I'm doing with, with my career and my life. All right, Katie Gordon, you're next. Um, I was wondering if you had um a favorite song you like to perform. Um, what is my favorite song to perform? I love performing Lois Lane, so I'm so glad that you guys requested it. <laughs> awesome. Kevin Burke, you're up. Wow, I uh, I actually just feel like I got a treat. I came to talk sports business, and I got into a, a really cool uh, musical treat here. I just I don't have a question. I just wanted to say thanks. Aw, thank you so much. You got it. Um, really quick, just like just to let you know, I since like you're with the NCAA partnership, you know that whole big thing. Right. I think it's amazing. Um, I get to play an event here in Dallas called the Big 12 NCAA March awesome. 9th. So I'm going to be playing that here at the American Airlines Center. Very cool. Congrats. Thanks. Way to get in on the, uh, the sports action. For sure. It's going to be a blast. That is so cool. That is very oh. cool. Maybe I'll try and buy a ticket if I can get in. 
<laughs> Please do. Grab me one too. <laughs> Come on out. It's going to be a blast. I'm excited. Knocks, you're up. Sorry, I had to go off mute. I mean, what question do I have? She, she sang a song to me. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> Sweet. Well, you wanted me to dance. Tell her about the dance moves that I can do. Oh, yeah. So uh, we uh, interviewed the Dallas Maverick cheerleaders. <laughs> and Yates over here um, got 30 seconds of training and was then videotaped doing some Maverick moves. Oh, and my God. Charles, Charles cut it down to a repeating GIF image. And so you see Yates doing this crazy dance for about four seconds on loop, and we call it the Yates dance. So, so now uh, USA Today has written about it. Dancing with Stars is talking to me about it. So if I'm on Dancing with Stars, maybe I'll bring you on. You can sing, and uh, I'll dance to your song. Chris Yates, the only way that I would do that is if you would reenact your dance moves right now. No, the link is there down you go. in the chat. Come on. It's on, oh, yes. it's on oh. YouTube. Come on, man. The link up. It's on, I can't. I, it's the I, link. I it's, serenaded it's, you four songs. <laughs> <laughs> It was. I mean, you should see it. It's an. It's a. It's a YouTube sensation. It's called the Yates dance. Come on. Mind blown. The Yates dance. I, I want to be on a. I want to be on a Beans video. The Yates dance. Let's create a song for it. There you go. Charles, Yates dance. Click on. Click on Charles's little link there. There it is. You see it? I love it. Oh my gosh, that's so amazing. Oh, yes. I was pretty good. That was thirty seconds of lessons. Look at that move. That is awesome. Oh yeah. Oh I yeah. Was actually better than that one girl in the back. <laughs> he should be cut you down. Go All right, Robert Hanlon, you're next. Uh, no, thank you for coming on. I've never heard your music before, but it's terrific. I'll definitely tell all my friends to listen. Uh, how can I get? I need uh, some of those sunglasses. I don't have to wear those around campus. Come to UMass. Yeah, for sure, UMass. Um, my manager is actually a, a grad alumni. Guy from UMass, so. Oh, that's great. Yeah, come to North. Talk Hampton about your manager. Who is your manager? Um, Adam Mel, get over here. Oh. No, Adam come Mel, on. get in here, come man. On, dude. <laughs> this is Adam Mel, everybody. I he's, love Adam. He's not as scruffy as he was, but his nickname was Scruff Man because he had a big beard for a long time. Hi, this everybody. is Adam. Hey, everybody, hey, that, Adam? everybody that doesn't know Adam, Adam's a good dude, man. I met Adam a couple of, I don't know, about a year ago. He's a sharp guy. Y'all are lucky to be together. Uh, Adam, tell me what you, you used to be with CBS Radio. You had a great career and you kind of screwed up your life to go for this, uh, which is a mistake, but you're going to make it big now. But it is it is a challenge, you know, to, to, to branch out. But obviously you believed in her. What did you see? Um, oh, Chris, you put me on the spot, buddy. You're getting paid back. That's what I do, man. <laughs> Uh, before CBS, I was in the music business, actually in the Latino music business, and every time I was in the arenas uh, with different tours, I would always look at out in the crowd, and I always said that I wanted to break a pop artist, and Bean came into my life through a mutual friend in, what, August of 11? August of 11. Yeah. Not even a year. And to be honest with you, I heard a song on YouTube that a, a mutual friend of ours had introduced us, which was Like to Love You, and it was an acoustics uh, song. I didn't even care about that there were, I think it was like 30,000 YouTube hits or something like that. I just knew it. and Because you've been in the music business how many years now? Uh, well, I was six years. It's probably about a total of, I've spent eight of my 18 professional years in the music business. And uh, as soon as I met Noel, uh, we, we actually uh, we met uh, at the Four Seasons. It was hilarious. Uh, she, we were both actually really late to the meeting. She couldn't find the place. What did you think it was a grocery store? I thought it was a grocery store, like a whole yeah. food. I've never heard <laughs> this of a is great. Thing. This is great info. And uh, and I was late. And um, long story short, as soon as I met her, and really there was a. I want everyone to know there was really a a, a turning point for me in our meeting. Um, Bean was flown around by a record label back in um, June, July of uh, eleven. And for any of you out there that are in the music business or aspiring to be in the music business, um, Bean was flown around with her mother. You don't mind if I tell the story, do you? I'm not gonna. Uh, Bean, was <laughs> Bean was flown around by the record label um, with her mom to Nashville, New York, and Austin, uh, trying to find her sound. And she was meeting with producers, and that's a normal step uh, in the business. 
and they wanted her to sign a contract, and she left the hotel. Uh, she left the contract on the hotel room bed, and at 19 years old, being flown around uh, first class, limos, all, all the great things that they were doing to court her. Uh, when I heard that story that she didn't sign her life away and that she really wanted to do things right and didn't take the easy buck and, and didn't want to chase it and wanted to work hard, you know, as they say in poker, I went all in. And uh, awesome. I really wanted to help this girl sitting next to me. And um, it's a story that it's just an amazing story. And uh, ever since, uh, I guess, what, August of last year, August of 12, I quit my job. I went into my boss. I was like, Adam, you quit your job at CBS Radio. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, wow. wow. So you all both, both went all in, really? Yeah, yeah we did. And uh, it's been uh, it's unbelievable. It really is a blessing. Uh, every day is, a, is a, a new day with new phone calls and bigger phone calls and different trips. And, I mean, like Bean was telling you, you know, we were at the W Hotel just now at an event, racing in the car to get here. I'm texting you. Chris will be there in five minutes. Yeah. And, we're running into the house to get down here to this dojo that we built for her, and it um, one day every every day is a great day. So I love this girl; she's uh, she's great, and uh, I'll do anything for her. So I appreciate you coming on. I know I put you on the spot, but uh, I really uh, uh, y'all are doing fantastic, and the best of y'all because I like y'all as people. Y'all are good people. Uh, when you say you can you can judge talent, I can judge people. You two are good people. Uh, what that, whatever the hell that means, you're good people. <laughs> y'all are good people, you know what I mean? And so Chris, I, can, no, I can judge that, and y'all are going to be successful. So uh, we'll play one you. more I, song. Go I ahead. expect to see you in two weeks at the same bar at South by Southwest that we ran into last year. <laughs> you are there, pal. I'm going to step out. out. Nice we'll be down there. Everybody. We'll be down there. Thank right. you, Adam, for coming on. Yeah. Be one last song, and then we will close up. Watching tonight. Sweet. If you don't know Noel Bean, you will know her after this, and you will know her in the future. This is a future star, and uh, you know she'll never be on our show again because she'll be too famous for us. But we we do appreciate getting her on when she was uh, starting out. Thank you so much for having me. By the way, should I? Um, are there any requests that that the Beanies have? Beanies, what do you got? Speak up. Sunshine is what we're hearing. Sun should we end it with a somber song? <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess. I guess. Yes. Yeah. We're hearing two yeses on that. Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. Um, another piece of merch that I have, if I can. can so what's look? the story behind this song real quick? Um, the story behind this song, um, if you're just now tuning in. Yes. I wrote this song whenever I was, or I, I wrote this song about whenever I was 12 years old. Um, my dad passed away from a drug overdose and it took a toll on the family. It was on 4th of July and it just, it was a hard time to deal with things and up until just a couple of years ago I wrote a song about um, the whole thing happening and it was therapy for me to be able to get the words out that I never got to say to my dad before he passed away. And um, I hope that while I'm playing this song, if you have lost somebody close to you and haven't properly healed from that loss, I don't think you ever, I mean, fully could, but in hearing these lyrics, I hope that um, it's able to heal a part of your heart, too. So um, I've got my Bean, You Are My Sunshine bracelet on. I know it's kind of like, whoa, alien on her wrist, but um, it's it says You Are My Sunshine on it, and you can get it at beanmusic.com. Um, for sale, and it has different flicker options. <laughs> but here we go. This is sunshine. <clears throat> Since you've been gone, remorseful little voices say it. What's done is done. Midnight chimes and I fight back the tears. 
lots of a bitter goodbye. I know things went wrong. One final choice led me down a road I don't belong. Darling, no. Someday, somehow, we'll meet again. Until then, here's a song about. Before my eyes, heard the news, none them confused. As I watched my mother cry, and the stars were shy. As I looked up from that wooden swing, watching fireworks and wondering if you were watching me. Oh, I know things went wrong. One final choice led me down a road I don't belong. In the way someday, somehow we'll meet again. And until then, you're my Superstar, we appreciate you coming on tonight. Appreciate Thank you, you for having stories. Me. I mean, great stories, great emotion, great passion. Uh, thank you so much, everybody. Thank we're you, about Evan. to go off the air. I want y'all to know next week, and Charles doesn't even know this. I would like to throw him for a loop, and he's not even around. Next week, we got uh, a movie director, Corey Van Dyke, and uh, Johnny Snead, their first movie premiere, and the movie's called Far Marfa. And it has premiered a Texas independent movie. So uh, you can hear about uh, how they created it, and you can talk to movie actors. So uh, this week was a uh, Cisco Sports. Brian Bedford, you still there? Thank yes, you. I have nothing else to say or share after Bean did all of her magic, but uh, <laughs> Chris, uh, thanks for having me tonight. Thank you for being part of the show. Uh, thank you, uh, Griffith. Thank you, Kate. Thank you, Katie. Uh, Kevin Burke. Keith Knox. Way to go. Robert Hanlon. And also Charles Hogue, best producer around. And uh, Adam and Noel Bean. Congrats. And good night, everybody. We appreciate y'all. Thank you, Noel. Thank you so much. Bye, guys. Good night.